Hello and welcome to SAFC Fan TV Extra Time. I'm not sure it's extra time. We've not had normal time this week, so it's still extra time. It's all <laughs> extra time over the summer. <laughs> as usual, you're just stuck with me and Conrad. How are you doing, Conrad? I'm not bad yourself, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. And you can't tell with this lighting, but I've got terrible sunburn all over my face. Mate, I have to, <laughs> I have to like leap from shade to shade <laughs> right now because like, even phantom like, ginger. <laughs> yeah, even with like factor fifty or anything unlike that, mate. I've just got to like run, <laughs> run for it because I'll just turn out like a peach the next day. It'll be awful. Just take solace in knowing that somewhere Jack Colback's suffering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's always good fun. Well, it's um, someone said today when we were going out, they were like, oh, uh, lunch, they were like, oh, it's cold. And it was like, because there was a bit of a breeze. And I was like, this is perfect. It's sunny, <laughs> but it's cool. Like, this is exactly yeah. what I want. I don't want to get to August again and have two days of 40 degrees. It can fuck off. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, I don't like uh, it. Bad enough. <laughs> right. So today, extra time is all managers. It's all managers. Now, we're going to do our. Best and worst first. Uh, you've all probably got your own opinions. Can't wait to see them in the comments afterwards. Um, and at the end, we're going to assess the current rumours and what's going on and who we'd have that way. So we'll jump straight in with probably the easiest section, and it's going to be worst. Are we doing one for one? I think you said three each, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, go, we'll go one for one, and I will let you go first. Okay. So um, three choices in total. I know there's a lot to pick from. <laughs> that's the worst thing. It's harder to pick because there's just so many. Um, this does not include caretaker managers. I was thinking that. but um, Throw that out there. Yeah. Mike, don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. I, I liked him at the time, but when you look back on it with hindsight, he really should have walked the league, and that is Jack Ross. Um, so I know you've you've got Parkinson and Johnson in that league as well, but for me, Jack Ross had arguably the best squad that League One has ever seen, um, <laughs> dropping down with yeah. him, yeah. and should have done a lot better with that that team. Even when you got in the likes of Will Grigg, I mean, like I know he wasn't bothered, but it should have worked. Like you've got two, three four players who'd all played in the Premier League for you, players that had done an entire championship campaign, and then you're a bit like, we're still struggling to to really sort of break teams down at home. And it's always been a thing for Sunderland that we struggle to break teams down at home when they just come in and defend. But it just yeah. felt like 19 draws in that first season with that team. And then the start of the next season where we just lost two in like seven or something like that at the beginning and drew some other ones and like last minute draws away at Bolton who would like been in free fall. So I think it's, it might be a harsh one compared to some managers who've lost and lost and lost. Yeah. But it's a bit like you should have done better with the tools that you had. Yeah. I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. That, that's uh... so it might be harsh, might be harsh, but and no, I it's interesting because it, it's this could be for any reason. This could just be yeah. I personally don't like him. He smelt like mouldy toffees. Oh, well, Whatever yeah, you that's, do. That's, uh, that's parking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, I'll do my first, and I am gonna go off the stats, but also because the guy was the dullest man in history, and my first choice is gonna be Howard Wilkinson. Oh, okay. Now, granted, he had big shoes to fill. Yes, because he came in after reed mm. um and whether you know peter reed didn't quite finish on the high that he took us to at one point it's still massive shoes to fill and he just he was the first Sunderland manager i'd seen in a while with so lack of like oh my god did you watch a press conference i don't think i got through five minutes of a press conference without walking away so it i think just... luckily i was at that age where you were like a really early teenager and you just thought Football was just literally about turning up on the weekend and 
and beating the team. <laughs> she didn't really pay attention to all the other. Well, even even the after the game, you know, the, the 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 guy stood there with the mic. It's just like it just it so dull. Yeah. It could make a ten nil win sound like a there one nil loss. There was something about how when Peter Reed left, I'm sure the old uh, Bob Murray was. Um, I was going to say the old chairman, but I remembered his name this time. Um, was asking people about Mick McCarthy and and wanting to bring him in. So he mm. asked Howard Wilkinson, what does he think of him? And Howard Wilkinson sort of talked him out of Mick McCarthy and talked himself into the, the role. Well, well, that must have been the most talking he'd done all season. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, wasn't he must have me. talked himself out, yeah. So he's he's my first pick. That's that's fair enough. It's hard to argue that one. I best I best make notes of these, hadn't I? Yeah. So we, yeah. <laughs> so you had Jack Ross, and I've got. Uh, yeah. But was it always like for your one? Was it always going to be difficult for somebody to follow Peter Reed? Yeah, but we've I mean, had I know so it's not many. Quite Alex we've Ferguson had... following or Klopp but... or someone like that, but still people like but even people like McCarthy, Bruce, people mm. of that era, people that are around and available for the kind of job, would have had more passion. It was just the oh mm. it makes Beale look excited on the sideline. <laughs> that's that's yeah, that says a lot actually. Fair enough. <laughs> Can't argue with that. What's your next one then? Uh ooh, ah. I'm gonna go with this. This is the one where I just think it's uh, it, it's more. Well, I kind of Jack Ross was kind of incompetence as well, but this is a different kind of incompetence of Simon Grayson. Um, just it was, I mean, it was turgid football, wasn't it? I know he was only in for like three months, but if you actually think back, apart from the Derby game, the first game of the season, and Norwich away. We were really bad, like yeah. really bad, and I know we had some shocking players and and that, and obviously that transferred over into to Coleman as well. So maybe it is not, but I even just think, especially when you watch something like Sunderland Till I Die, and it reminds you of his interviews and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you just sort of go, "What are you doing?" Like he was sat in a a room with like Undong, Dilabodji, Jack Rodwell. Kone, John O'Shea, and he was sitting there with like a, a flip chart going like, you know, this this transfers on to the supporters after, you know, that makes them feel better about the weekend and, you know, we want to give that positive atmosphere to them. And you're sitting there going, shut up, like, they think you're an <laughs> idiot, mate. Like, you know, less it was like Beale's first press conference, which is still on the Sunderland site, where not press conference, but like, he's in a meeting with the players and he comes in and he's just like, basically, lads, you're already a good group. You don't need me. You know, I think I can just. Do, and I'm sitting there going, "You don't, don't flipping say that." Like <laughs> they've literally brought you in; they do need you. Like, yeah, it's how just, to talk yourself out of a job in the first two minutes. Yeah, and then it was just <laughs> results like you three one up at Brentford and you throw it away. You you get battered three nil at Barnsley, who end up getting relegated with you. You know, mm. like. Uh, even Bolton, who I don't know if they came down that season or maybe the season afterwards, but they give you a game at home when you're like, like it was just awful. Um, three three the Bolton game wonder uh, Yeah, Grayson, only just but he got sacked after that. That still. was the last one, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um and just yeah, I think it was just awful. And and maybe he was uh, if I'm being kind, maybe he was hamstrung by recruitment, maybe he was hamstrung by certain players not wanting to play their part. Um mm. uh, but I think I think we've I think always had a squad. I think we've yeah. no matter all these managers, we've always had a squad that could challenge with the right leadership. So mm. I, there's only so much you can put on them. Well, you, he, he had less than 17 percent for his win ratio, 16.7. Like Lewis Graben, for example, wasn't doing that well, and Chris Coleman didn't like him. But he got 12 goals in half of the season for us, and he was the only reason we were getting anywhere near out of the bottom three. Like so, we had a, mm-hmm. a clear goal scorer in that team, and. You just couldn't, and you had McGeady in that team, and you had, um, I'm trying to think who else. That's probably about it, really, <laughs> actually, when you look back. But yeah, just that was that was the only chant in the, in the uh, half time bar area. We've got Aidan McGeady. That was that was it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had like, so Paddy McNair wasn't a bad player in the championship. You had like Darren Gibson before all the drink. You had, 
you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't. You none of us can remember Darren Gibson before all the drink. You or do you mean before he got caught with all? <laughs> I, my favorite Darren Gibson moment is still the one where he was in the pub and someone's just asking him questions, and he's just like basically doing what a footballer should really not do, which is just be open and honest about everything. So he's just like, they're like, oh, why are you in here? You're pissed off your head. And he's like, oh, I still want to play for Sunderland, though. The rest of them don't. Name them. I'll go through them. It's like, don't double down. (laughs) (laughs) Just stop. (laughs) Like, He was was axed after that one, wasn't he? That was when he was gone after that. He was dropped there, and then he stayed, and then he crashed his car. Later yeah. on in the season, and that was that was the one. Um, yeah, what a fall from yeah. grace. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. So I'm I'm going with Simon Grayson just because I, I just thought he was tragic. Simon Grayson. Yeah. Well, good shout, good shout. He was on my uh, maybe's list, um, but my num- my second one will be Moyes. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I expected a lot more. Because only for, because I thought United didn't give him enough of a chance when he got put in charge there. Mm. You know, if Alex Ferguson sees something in somebody, there must be something there. Yeah. In my opinion. But um, yeah, he won eight games out of 43. Right. We gave him way too much of a run. Uh, he was opinion. the one where... Like in all those seasons in the Premier League, we decided to stick with a manager, and it was the time when we actually needed to get rid and do it again and bring in another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just well, it. I was just reading it there when I was looking that um, it we finished with just twenty four points, sixteen points adrift from Watford in seventeenth. I mean, that's got to be one of the worst performing mm. seasons. Going. I I was going to put him third, but I'll think of a of a different one, but. The big thing for David Moyes with me was so we played Man City in his first game and we narrowly lost 2 1. And this is Pep Guardiola's first game in charge at Man City. And uh, I think they scored a, or we scored a last minute own goal. So that's the only reason they beat us. And then we lost to Borough at home. Yeah. And if I, even if I'm being kind, you never want to play a newly promoted side in the first six games. Um, he then came out after the Borough game, this is in August, and said, well, it's really likely we're going to be relegated anyway. We're just not good enough. And you're like, you've got 36 games left, David. You can't be mm. announcing we're going to get relegated in August. <laughs> like, have a bit of, like, have a bit of fight about you. Like, like yeah. when you see him at Everton, you always thought, oh, he's, he's got something about him where he won't just lie down and, and take this. And, and maybe Man United sort of drilled that out of him. Um, yeah. Because it took him a while to recover, obviously, with West Ham. He's sort of semi-recovered. What are you doing, Cat? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, he, he would have been my third one as well. He, he was he was a shocker. Well, go on, then. If you're going to flip the script, who's your third one now, then? Ah, <sighs> bah, 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 bah. Do you want me to go up my third to give you? Yeah, a you go your time? third. Yeah, you're taking one. So yeah. Okay, so my third doesn't need no explanation. So it's nice and quick anyway. It's Beal. He made mm. the list. Yeah, he's made the list, and he I've not even list. looked. I've not even looked at the percentages or anything like that. And the eye I, test will do you. <laughs> and I wasn't even biased from the start. I mean, when everyone else was screaming when he got appointment you know i had the trust in bill i was you know trying yeah, to get behind Beale, the manager yeah. in bill we trust yeah i was trying to don't get behind the manager don't you feel stupid now <laughs> no i just feel let down <laughs> just let down but it, it, basically my stipulation for a manager of this club is show more passion than the players and as close to the passion as the fans as you can get yeah somewhere in that middle ground and i'm happy yeah mm. It, the the players are paid to be there. Uh, uh, obviously, the manager's paid as well. That, but if they're like a season long loan, they're usually not as passionate sort of thing. But they still give it their all a lot of the time. A lot of mm. them do, and I just want to see passion from a manager. Really do. I'd I'd happily lose ten games in a row with a manager that's absolutely screaming on the sideline, looking for changes and trying new things. Mm. When Dodds was more experimental with formations than Beal, that tells you something. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, so Beale's made my list and I don't even need any more explanation than that. No. <laughs> I don't think you do. Um... <laughs> so 
So you're older than me. I know I look older, but you are old. <laughs> so you've got. A... <laughs> I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that compliment. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think. You you've got a more sort of solid memory on who was what. So I'm going to run through a couple where I'm I'm sort of sitting with them. So there's De Canio is one of them. However, he had a very good the, the, five the six game. The, the five can't. six game injury. Yeah, exactly. So I, you can't do that. You've then got. Um, Dick Advocat, but you can't for that first bit where he came in, but then the start of the next season. But you could argue that the first bit was caretaker, yeah, that's potential. Um, then you've got, uh, I mean, you have to be honest and say, sort of, Chris Coleman has to be in there as well, even though he was a nice guy and. He's a married man with six kids, as he said when that guy called him a prick. Um, oh, I wanted him to deck him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that was the one time I went, can someone just punch one of these fans for doing this? Like, <laughs> can we stop turning up drunk <laughs> like, in front of the managers, please? Just, um, I'm going to probably have to give it to Phil Parkinson. It's probably the one. Just over Lee Johnson. Mm. Because Johnson I got... I find a- really odd. With Parkinson, like he didn't do well, as well as he should have done. He, I think he had a, a sort of way in, in that he wanted to play. And like our best player and Aidan McGeady didn't fit that. And it wasn't a case of how do I get him in the team? It's just like, we don't need him, which was incredibly wrong. Yeah. Uh, because McGeady came back in for Johnson and was top assister and, you know, in the, in the team and, you know, which was then putting them on a plate for Charlie White to score 30 in a season. You know, it's just uh, yeah. and Charlie White wasn't even scoring for us for the first two seasons. It was just, yeah, um, the, he had that spell, um, Parkinson, where he did win several games sort of in a, in a, in a period. I think we were away at Doncaster towards Christmas time. We beat yeah. him 2 1, and then he beat sort of Wickham at home, Lincoln at home, like somebody else away and it was like oh hang on maybe he's got it and you saw it was like Jordan Willis was like overlapping centre backs and you know we were playing sort of an in, not an inverted but like a, an outside sort of 4 3 3 and it was sort of like oh maybe this is maybe mm. this is it maybe he's turned a corner but then we drew two all at home to Gillingham we lost 2 0 to Bristol Rovers we went away to Coventry who were sort of neck and neck with us in the league and they beat us Mm. easily and it was a bit like it all started to unravel and then the world stopped for two two years um whereas i think he he, we wouldn't have got to the playoffs and he would have been gone in summer but they gave him that sort of grace of like oh well the season ended we don't really know it was going let's just see See what happened yeah and it didn't start off any better whereas i actually think even though johnson was was pretty bad he Uh. got us playing in a certain way which then Alex Neal built on and when Tony Mowbray then built on and he mm-hmm. got the right sort of I don't know if it was his choice but maybe it was a bit more speedman but he got the best out of the players he was given will you get off the desk cat um you know like uh Pritchard when he came in you know he, he got him sort of back playing again he got Charlie White scoring however many goals it was you know and yeah the yeah, I'm gonna to have to give it to Parkinson. Uh, but Lee Johnson was very close just for things like Pomo and stuff like that. Just yeah, right. well, we're gonna to have to narrow this down in a quick way to get a, 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 a worst and a runner up. Okay, so we'll, we'll concede to have one each. So out of your three, which is Jack Ross, Simon Grayson, and Parkinson, mine are all who, very like within a period of each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the worst? Uh, Who's on the chopping block tonight? I think for me, uh, and I and I liked him as a guy. I liked his, you know, is I like I, well, I just liked him. But mm. it's you should have done better with what you had, and we should have pissed League One that first time, which was um, Jack Ross. Yeah, like I think it's because of how well we should have done with that team, rather than so like David Moyes, you go. Well, that team that Sam Allardyce had was great, but if you actually think he took him Villa out of it, he got rid of um, Kabul for mm. other reasons as well. Uh, he sort of didn't play Fabio Barini and he got rid of Kazri and just sort of exiled him from the team. And you sort of think you took apart a 
big part of Sam Allardyce's team there. And yeah. just sort of, even then you pissed off Kone and wouldn't play him for the first few months of the season because of a wage dispute, which was yeah. agreed by a previous manager. And you should have just gone, do you know what? Yeah, we'll do it. It's not my money. Like, if yeah, the club are willing to do it, it yeah. let's just give him it because he's clearly been a great player for us. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to have to go Jack Ross. I just think it's because of how good a squad you had for the job you had, you should have walked coming back up. Yeah, so a refresher, mine are Howard Wilkinson, David Moyes and Beal. I'm going to cross Beal off because I think it's more so that the hurt is recent. Yeah, it's recency bias, Rather than the it? record, yeah. So I'm going to cross he him was, off. He was a bad manager because he. it wasn't that he was just bad at his job, but he was like antagonistic towards the fans as well, yeah, which didn't just, help him out. He's a terrible appointment. He and just he was did a Twitter not warrior on an, yeah. unknown, on an unknown account. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm left with Wilkinson and Moyes. And I think purely for the fact I probably saw a touch more passion from Moyes, I'm going to go my worst being Howard See, Wilkinson. Oh, I think that's wrong, but that's your opinion. That's it. You should have picked it for but, your own then. <laughs> but it's because I think David Moyes got a full season and it felt like he gave up in August. Whereas I think Howard Wilkinson... Is that him? Just... Is, is that his fault? Yes. Or is that senior level's fault? I think that's his fault. They came what? out after we lost to Man City champions yeah. when we lost to Middlesbrough, which he set up and went, ah, we're going to be relegated. And it's like, and then he went, right, do you know what this team needs? Is an Everton reunion. Stephen Pienaar, Oviedo, Darren Gibson, Jolie and Lescott, Victor and Ichabi. One out of five of those was any good, and he played about six games. <laughs> like, and we still love him now in Ichabi, yet he played the fewest times out of all of them. <laughs> like, it was just a sort of David Moyes getting wow. the band back together, whereas at least Howard Wilkinson was just shit. I think Wilkinson was my first ever bout of depression. Not fair enough, this that, club. That's kind so. of a good reason. Sort of <laughs> he, he triggered that first yeah. ever. <laughs> right. well, I think so, it's the other way around, but I'm, uh, it's your pick. <laughs> so we've got Ross and Wilkinson. Ross and Wilkinson. So ignoring the squads they had, ignoring the seasons they played in. If you've got them two managers in front of you now and you had to pick one, who's the better of the two? Who's the better of who's the, the two? Who's the better of the two? Because that'll be the runner-up. Probably Ross, I would say. So Ross is better. So uh, Wilkinson wins. Just because he... <laughs> Like if if I'm being credit if I'm giving him any sort of credit, we only lost five games in forty six. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah, yeah. It was the draws and yeah. this sort of like he didn't change his system ever. Whereas I think Wilkinson just never had the players on side <laughs> by yeah. the sounds of it. It's it's horrible, but I mean, and draws can feel like a win and they can feel like a loss depending mm. on how they're being got. They but, all yeah. felt like a loss in League One. Yeah, <laughs> every one of them. Mom, mainly because we were in front for most of them. That's the problem. That's the yeah. problem. If you if you come from two 0 behind, you get a draw. You walk away yeah. with a good feeling, you know. But yeah. Mm. So worst ever Sunderland manager, in our opinions, is Howard Wilkinson, closely followed by Jack Ross. Let me know your two. Could in be the David comments. Moyes. It would have been David Moyes. Yeah. Well, I have to go quickly through our best three if we want to get through this whole show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to get to the rumors bit, yeah. Um, so just spout your three, just okay. give us all three. Well, I have to say, Peter considering... Reed, uh, I have to say, Sam Allardyce, and I think for me, I'm gonna have to. I mean, I don't want to just say Roy Keane, but um, <laughs> and you know what? I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, oh, no, I can't really say that. I was going to go, do you know what, McCarthy, I liked him, but then I remembered that season where we got 15 points and I'm like, oh God. Um, yeah, I'm going to be a basic bitch and say Keen Allardyce <laughs> and Peter Reid. <laughs> well, you've you've got winning in mind. I've got yeah. memories in mind. Um, okay. So Mick McCarthy is on my list. Okay. I love him. What I love the guy. Uh, everything. Memory? Every single interview, every single interaction with the cameras, he's just okay. hilarious. I love the guy. Is that, yeah, but <laughs> most of those ones, like when he jumps at nothing or he does that look to the camera or the, <laughs> yeah, the ghost. In the Blackpool, yeah, 
the Blackpool <laughs> comments where they go, surely this can't get any worse, Mick. And he goes, it can. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there's a br- there was a brutal honesty about that. Yeah, it was I, like talking to your manager of your local pub team. It was... <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I met him actually while he was Sunderland manager. I'd have only been about thirteen or fourteen, and he was he was funny as out because we just lost to Crystal Palace in the playoffs uh, yeah. on penalties. And I was I think I was with my dad, and I was pick, we must have been picking mum up from like Durham Tees Valley Airport or Teesside if you're old enough to remember it was Teesside Airport. Yeah, and um, he was just in there, uh, sort of waiting to get on a flight, but he was clearly chatting up the two birds on the. What easy jet sort of um sort of booth or whatever it was. And there's me walked over in my little Sunderland shirt, like, Oh yeah, Mick. And he was like, Oh, I see we still got one fan in us then, haven't we? <laughs> Just because we're like a week after losing. He's like, I've still got one. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. There you go. That's what that's what I like. So I like Mick me. McCarthy. Um nobody will agree with my I, my next two could have been on somebody's wuss list, okay. but I'm only going to pick one of them. Okay. And it was De Canio and Poet. Moments and memories, I guess. Knee yes. slides and Wembley. Yeah, and do you know what? I like De Canio. I thought De Canio could have done a lot more with a lot more time. Well, I think he's the that? kind of passionate manager, if he's given the power to, could overhaul a club. Have you seen, I don't know if you watch Under the Cosh, but they have had several players on there who've played under him, whether it be at Swindon or Sunderland or wherever it is. And they all say the same thing, which is he's he's absolutely fantastic at his shape and knowing where he should be. However, if he just dialed himself down by like 60%, he'd arguably be the best manager in the country. <laughs> like, well, there you go. But I don't yeah. like him dialed down. I like no. him dialed up. But I think he should have been yeah. given a lot it's more the, time. It's the, I think he said something like, <laughs> like, I think it was Tommy Miller had said he'd had like a pulled groin or something and Decanio just told him to run it off. And he was like, you can't just run off a pulled groin. And Decanio's like, yeah, you can. Just do it. <laughs> that is what, that's a man after my own heart. I told yeah. a rugby player on my rugby team in school to run off a broken <laughs> collarbone. It yeah, didn't work. Just, just it <laughs> it's fine. Rub some dirt on it. <laughs> and the yeah. last one, which I think we're going to be consensus and the winner, is going to be Reed. You know, it's just, I think Peter Reed, for what he did for the club, um, we got up, we finished the highest we'd ever finished in the Premier League. Twice. Um, twice uh, Phillips with the golden boot one of them seasons yeah he had some great players under him that could be a credit However, to him just a minus point <gasps> when the team had to change and evolve he couldn't do it yeah but that's but then none of the other managers have been there that long to actually change and evolve a team well this is it this is it because Keane's think... the same when he got to a certain point with the players he couldn't get any further I always used to think what could he have done yeah. If, I mean, if he'd had a budget as well. Because he yeah. didn't have a massive budget. We yeah. didn't have money coming out he of our... Zlatan over. He, he tried to yeah. sign Zlatan and didn't get him. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If he'd had a budget, if he'd had the support, I, what he could have done would have been amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I think it has to, be, has to be him or Bob Stoko, I guess. But neither of us said him because we're not that old. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> no, get um, your Terry on, they'll give you a different manager. <laughs> definitely, mm. <laughs> I'll. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to say Reed. Yeah, I, th- I think so. Although I, I think under Allardyce when we stayed up and we beat Everton, and it was the closest I felt to this is it now. This yeah. is where we progress and move forward, and this is the moment. Well, then he but then, us for an no, England. no. Then Roy Hodgson <laughs> ruined it all by losing to Iceland in the Euros. Because <laughs> if he'd have done all right in the Euros, he wouldn't have gone anywhere, and Allardyce yeah. would have still been some of the manager. Yeah, the, the, and the, then I, it's him and his I'm, pint of wine. Yeah, disgruntled of the way all that happened, yeah. unfortunately. England but ruined Sunderland I will, for eight years. <laughs> yeah, I'll happily concede he's the runner-up over mine. Yeah. So there you go. So our best two, Peter Reid, followed by Sam Allardyce. Let us know yours in the comments as well. Um, Be interesting. If anybody says Beal, you'll be banned permanently from the channel. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have the power to do that. You're all right. (laughs) We'll we'll have a look into it. (laughs) (laughs) We'll consider it. Right. So we know the best. We know the worst. But what's next? Is it going to be another Beal? 
Is it going to be another Peter Reed? The rumours are ridiculous. I mean, some of the rumours are ridiculous. I've seen, uh, you know, the, the usual names are popping up, like uh, uh, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. Keane's name is always there. It's on the tip of everyone's tongue every single time. And then every manager you're thinking of. So we're going to go through a few of the rumours, um, just of what's more recent recently. Uh, uh, magically, we have a screen. <laughs> For those who and are listening. <laughs> in no particular order, and not because he was one of my potential favourites, Gus Poyer has been in the news Does that say recently. he's Greek? Greece. Yeah, but he's not Greek. Is Uruguay? That's yeah. his nationality. I know. Just Greece why Greece probably, was, where is, is he managing? Probably because probably because an international. T- yeah, because he had an international job with them, didn't he? So right, okay. that's his most recent job. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> nationality like, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got like age. We don't really mind. Mm. Preferred formation makes no difference. Sunderland always play the same formation. Um, points per match. I like to keep an eye on. So 1.58 on average. Funnily enough, if you look at the little chart of career history, that them green blocks are like average points. Mm. And Sunderland's one of the lower ones. Yeah. <laughs> he did Context better before us. How we were. And after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean that could be down to the team. What do you think of this one? Is a rumor. Like, um, I mean, would would this appointment, if this was announced tomorrow, how would you feel? I, I mean, I wouldn't be unhappy because I I like him, but I probably wouldn't be enthralled that this is a, a man to sort of carry us forward because I'm mainly looking at that Brighton team when he was there and he wasn't doing, he wasn't, you know, absolutely smashing it out with Brighton in the championship before then. Mm. Um, Average, you know, uh, just were, over two points though. They were, they were high up, but they weren't, they weren't promoted. It took Chris mm. Hewton to get them promoted and over the line. Uh, and with us, I sort of, yes, he kept us up. And then it was like, uh, can you, can you get, make us better? And I never felt we actually did get that much better. Um, yeah. And, and then it's, if we go back to individual games, his substitutions were horrendous um, in, in matches. He just, and then he got nothing out of um, Defoe, out of Fletcher, out of Wickham, you know, mm. and, and he got stuff out of Barini. And then he could, and then he wasn't able to sign him permanently when he, he actually needed it the full, the first time. Um, yeah. Yeah, it would. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be annoyed, but I. I don't think it's the right one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Average points, but my, I can't see his win percentage. Is that that's his overall win percentage? Yeah. There. So, I mean, if you look at it as an overall, forty-four percent as a win percentage isn't that bad, to be <sighs> fair. Uh, one hundred eighty-two wins, only one hundred twenty-seven losses on his career. So, yeah, I'd. I'd, I'd be happy. I'd be happy with him. I still I'm not sure if they're giving him for that FA Cup quarter final away at Hull. <laughs> like, well, this was before we ended our cup streak, right? <laughs> yeah, this is before that happened where we were like, we'd already been to Wembley in a final, we'd beaten the Mags twice, and we were like, we can go back to Wembley and play a League One team again. Like, yeah. what, what an unbelievable season this is. Next, these are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, they're just the ones that we threw out there. Steve Cooper. Um, what do you think of Steve Cooper? Um, most recently, Forest. Hmm. Not a great record at Forest. Uh, context. Percentage wise, context. Yeah, which true. was he was yeah. fantastic for Forest because Until... he got them from relegation zone in the Championship to promoted in the same season, and yeah. then spent a year and a half fighting relegation as you would do when you've come up with Nottingham Forest. Like context. Was, <laughs> they had some good. They had some good players. They had some good players. Is uh, is. Average points per match is higher than Poyer's. Um Did well at Swansea. Um, he has yeah. a good track record with younger players as well. Uh, yeah. Obviously, from his time Which at England. Which probably fits our model. <laughs> well, and at Forest, he wasn't in control of transfers because they used to just buy players in and just say, make this work at case in point on their first season. But that's um, what we'll do. <laughs> Which is why Forrest didn't work in the immediate in the Premier League because they brought in like 20 odd players. But then by the end of the season, he started to get what was sort of the best out of them because he mm-hmm. sort of had a bit more of a settled team. I really liked the idea of Steve Cooper and I think he'd be a great one with us. I don't think he'd be opposed to the model either because he's having worked under it before. Maybe he wants a change and sort of thinking, actually, why would I jump back into another job where my hands are tied? Um, yeah. But 
I think he'd be a good one for us, especially with experience in this league uh, of taking a, a lower side of Nottingham Forest at the time and absolutely flying up the league with them and improving players. What I, was I the average in their squad that went up? Do we oh, know? fuck knows. I mean, uh, flip knows. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not <yeah>. for kids. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everyone. I'll mark explicit on Spotify. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I, I like the idea, and like I say, the fact that he... It's him he over Poirier, so if, you, if you're going on them to... His points per match with England is 2.2. Mm. 2. His ratios there are really mm. good. Yeah. Uh, and I know it's under In fairness, though, Sam Allardyce's points per game ratio with England is three. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. You've, got to, you've got to weigh that up against the number of fixes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Graham Potter. Nat gonna happen not yeah. gonna happen <laughs> um, I mean what an experience for to, to yeah. come from Chelsea to go to us it would be a nice yeah. appointment it's uh, I think he's waiting waiting for a, a, a better opportunity it would scream of Chris Coleman coming to us when he was riding high after Wales in the Euros and what could he do next and he thought I'll go to Sunderland get him going and that'll make me look even better and it just went wrong if yeah. Graham Potter comes to us and it goes wrong you all look at Graham Potter and go, like, that's two Did bad you? jobs in a row now. Yeah. Um, uh, I think he should have done better at Brighton than he did. Well, don't forget this it, the season that, or the season before he got taken and the start of that season, he was doing really well with Brighton. He had a year before that where he was sort of floating around and, and sort of near mm. relegation, but not quite. So it's it's been a long build over the course for, for Brighton and he made them a lot better than they were when he took over. Yeah. Um we haven't got time for a long build. <laughs> no. Oh, we haven't got the patience for a long build is another so thing. That's um, a that, that's a nice to have, but you think he's just not gonna make it's that not career gonna happen. Move. And no. also I actually think Steve Cooper would be a better fit for us than him. Yeah. Gus Pyatt's still better. <laughs> 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 Next, I've got Liam Rosanier. Rosanier, Rosanier, Rosinia, <laughs> Rosinia. Yeah, Rosanier, Rosanier. I was trying to give Liam him, a, you know, Rosinia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm practicing my commentary mispronunciations. It's fine. A uh, bit of a younger manager, yeah. and not loads of experience. He um, did well. Um, however, he did get money thrown at him and still didn't quite get the job done um, with mm. them. He had um, Carv- Carvajal, or Carv- Carvalho, Carvalho from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. He had Liam de Lapp. We had, could have had him. <laughs> yeah, we should have. That was the entire player that we should have gone for to replace someone like Diallo. That was exactly what we should have done. Um, yeah. It's, I wouldn't, again, wouldn't be opposed to it. I think he's got the right sort of temperament for it. And he did well at Derby as well, if you look before. Um, and he did clearly a good job with. We well, didn't do much at Derby. Out. Twelve games. Oh, is it twelve? I couldn't see. Yeah, but yeah. still, two nearly averaging two points a game from twelve. Yeah, but you could play the twelve worst teams in that league in a row, right? It could just be a quiz. <laughs> you, can beat, you can only beat what's in front of you. You know, if if your if your record of the football was uh, the Scottish Premier League, but you happen to have not played. Celtic and you were the Rangers manager, it'd be a great record. <laughs> I mean, look at Sam Allardyce with his England record. <laughs> Stop going back to Sam, he's not coming. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I, I think personally, I think he'd be a step backwards. I don't think he'd be uh, a game changer. I wouldn't say a step backwards, I just don't think it's a it's the right well, one. We can't yeah. possibly step backwards. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a step backwards, I just don't think. It's what we need. Yeah, let me let me let me just put it this in perspective. Doesn't fit the model because he wants players. I'm not looking for a replacement of Beal or Dodds. No. For me, I'm still thinking: Are they better than Moyes? In in my head, that's the that's the kind of benchmark I'm looking at. So the next okay. one is the most popular: Bucky's, lots of fans. It's Will Still. I don't think I've actually forgot your opinion on Will Still. I think I've made my voice known no. quite well on it that I like him. Um, um, I just like throwing puns out there, like "Will Will Still Still Be the Favorite?" Uh, by the time <laughs> don't from... so don't say throwing them out there. What yeah. you'd like doing is messaging in me, going make yeah. a short saying this. Yeah. <laughs> However, when I said make a short saying Beale's been sacked, 
I was pretty uh, nailed on on that look one. At him, look at him taking the credit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I allowed you to take the credit at the time. I was like, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. When I, when you were we also like, going to allow me to go under the bus. Of it, didn't yeah. Oh, I, if I was wrong, I was like, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, anyone see the dynamic of the channel about now? Yeah. However, we're looking for volunteers. <laughs> do you want to know what I'd done if I was wrong? I guess we'll never know. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we'll still. Um, I thought in January when when we were looking at him, he had the right sort of temperament to be mm. a good manager for us. In terms of, he seemed very serious um, and wanting to do. He's a manager that's going to use us as a springboard to get further ahead than us, which I've got not got a problem with, because it's a bit like the old Wigan model in the late two thousands, where they were like, "Come here." and get yourself, you know, a season behind you and then move on to Tottenham or Man United or, or someone like that. And it really benefited them from, from doing that. I have no problem if Will still came in and flew us up the league and then ditched us, you know, like it's, yeah. if, if that's what you want to do, pal, that's what you want to do. I also think he's got a bit of an ego about him and a bit of like, a, I'm bloody good at this, which for someone who I think not, he's not a football manager sort of guy that's come through, but he's like a, a stats man, isn't he? And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah. But I, um, I mean, that, that kind of endears me to him that he's he's yeah. gone in at a low level in these. That's places. what I mean. He's, like, he's built himself up to exactly. Every next and I role. think that's why he's got that sort of ego about him. Um, that he's like, I know what I'm talking about because I didn't need to be a former player to be here, or I didn't need to be, mm. you know, with this. He's like, I'm, uh, I get it. And I think there's just something about that that's just quite appealing. However. I could see it being the other side where a bit like Beale, where he's just like, well, the Sunderland fans are clearly just idiots for thinking that I'm a terrible manager. Like, yeah. I don't think he's quite stupid enough to do that like Beale did. But I don't know. There was just something about him back in January. And I thought, I think this is the right temperament and a good fit for us to get someone with a bit of an ego to, to sort of um, push us on a bit. Mm. Does he work with the model? Probably not, but are we willing to change tact? Because if you look at the last few managers, they've all sort of worked under... Who was the last manager that really rocked the boat, you imagine? Yeah, God. And you're talking back to De Canio or Allardyce. I don't think Allardyce would rock the boat, but I think he, he knew how to get the players on side. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he, he probably... Is... He, he was he probably in a better position to demand more. You, yeah. you, you give the job to these lesser managers. And yeah. they can't so I think for me, it's a, I'd like to see it. Um, am I confident it's the right thing? No. But are we confident that any you know, decision is going to be the right one at the moment? I think it's just, it's a bit like when we brought Roy Keane in in 2006 or seven. It brings a lot of eyes to us. And he seems like the type that would like revel in that pressure. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? Do you think because he's so young, he's thirty-one, and he's not some. I mean, uh, Roy Keane walks into a dressing room and it's Roy Keane. You know what mm. I mean? Because uh, uh, he's not had that career, he's not been that professional footballer to to that degree. Do you think that would it, is more difficult for him to come in and command a presence with a squad? Maybe, but have you ever seen those in the like training videos of him where, where he's he flipping talks... between English and French? Yeah, yeah, and when he's talking to his players, he's not the type to be like, a, Oh, well, if we could just you know play a bit like this, and you know, maybe this will work. So, you've seen on like Sunderland Till I Die, you've got Coleman and his guys are like, Yeah, don't worry about it, you know, you just go out there and you do you do the best for you, and and like Coleman and Beal's a bit like that on some of his videos and you can see Mowbray being like that but in a sort of like like your granddad type of way going ah come on lads you can do this but yeah I think with him the way he was a bit like fucking three points on Saturday yeah that's what we it feels and it's a big statement I'm about to say here it feels very Jose special one in terms of that arrogance and that presence with him yeah of like I know what I'm talking about and this is what if we're going to win, this is how you bloody do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive fan of the uh, hairdryer treatment. 
with managers. Yeah. I think you need a manager that commands that presence and has a bit of that fear factor. Uh, if you ever you watch um, Premier Passions when you saw Peter Reed in the dressing room mm. and you've never heard as many beeps in one episode in your life. Oh, yeah. Mike Bassett's halftime talk when we were 2-0 down to the Mexicans. <laughs> it was on par with that. It was yeah. on par with that. <laughs> it was probably on par, definitely. Um, yeah. But yeah, Will still... Um, one of the favourites, very yeah. interesting. I, I would, think he's, I'm he's with up you. There I'd with like Cooper to, for me. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, it's probably curiosity more than education that's wanting me yeah. to see it's what it's a bit do. like. Let's test the waters on something different. Yeah, let's yeah. let's rock the boat. Yeah, any manager coming in is not going to have a hard uh, job no. to look back. Paul Heckenbottom, no, just just, just no. Just, <laughs> Just no. no, you can't just say no. no. You look, at those, just look at those records and those points totals. And I know they go, Oh, Sheffield United, this like well done. Half most of those points totals was last season, yeah. None of it is this season, yeah. He was the first one to criticize the, the ownership when it was going wrong. It's like, have you ever thought your team and the way you're setting them up is crap? Mm. There's a reason Luton and, she- and Burnley are beating both of you, and they didn't last season, yeah. It what worries me with him is the short stints leaves yes. for like four months. Hibs, I mean, get granted Scottish football's different, but should have been doing better than you know a fifty percent win, let just over fifty percent win ratio. You know, it, it's a no from me. It screams of the old thing when a championship team sees a Premier League manager getting sacked and thinks oh, that's what we need. Like he's been in the Premier League, therefore he must be good. Like that yeah. type of thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just no. Just no. Sorry, Paul, but, <laughs> but no. All right. So we ra- for some reason the next two weren't on this sofa score. So sofa score, sort your shit out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> be sponsored by us. Come because on, how can you? Score. Right. So Roy Keane's on sofa score. Roy Keane's our next one. Spoilers. <laughs> Roy Keane's on sofa score, but only as a player, not as no. a manager. Fair enough. Um, so we've got this really lovely grey table as just a reference. Um, he's Irish. Main Total point. honours won one. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know the oh, side. No, that is his managerial record. This is, yeah. I'm saying it's yeah. not on oh, Sofa's guy. I had to so find I it somewhere see. else. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking um, at it going, like, when you said it was a player, I was like, well, he's won way more than one. But I'm yeah. looking now. And and um, man, I'm also, I found manager stats that call it UK. Um, yeah. It's got the most American English badge I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so Roy I Keane mean, has always been on the tips of everybody's tongues. Every time yeah. there's any sort of break in management, somebody says, Roy Keane's coming back. Mm. Would he? What? Would he? Buzz Lightyear. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, ah. No, no, he wouldn't. I think he's he's got a happy career going on at the moment with Big Meeks and uh, Gary Neville and all of them on stick to football. However, if Jill Scott could convince him otherwise, then you know maybe. But um, would he be any good? Potentially. Would they listen to him? I don't think. I think when he came in, the Sunderland squad was pretty much at an all-time low, and mm. he had a like we said about will still had a presence about him which sort of got him the sort of players on side he still had to turf out a fair few of them so ben annick lawrence chris brown um you know uh leaving yeah. those players behind who were late full up hussein and Stokes. I like that i like yeah. that uh, transfer list in liam miller because he kept turning up late like good it's it, it's good and it's exactly what it should be and i think that's why he's so well thought of in sunderland because he didn't put up with any BS, you know, <laughs> yeah. but has as times moved on from there, yeah. Um, I'd like again, it's a curiosity one of I wouldn't be against it. Do I think it's the right one? No, 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 I, I, I would. Would I have to see him back in the dugout again? Yes, yeah, yeah would I I'd... love to see his press conferences again? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, I'd like to see him back. That would be great, but I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. I think it's a pipe dream. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's the punditry and what he does now that would keep him out of it. Mm. I think it's our model. I don't think he'd ever fit into that. He would have to come in and, well, and yeah, t- he, tell them he that he's always, not going to do any of that shit. I think he <laughs> mentioned the model at one point on um, that stick to football that he went, you know, they wanted to buy young players and that's great, but sometimes you, you need the older ones to sort of really get you over the line when it's not working. And mm. he goes, when you're telling me we can't bring that in, that's a that's a worry. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he'd come for that reason. And uh, but personally, I think if the right offer came along, I think he's the kind of guy that misses that. I think he likes. Oh yeah, I think he always says management. he'd like to get back yeah. into football. And if you actually yeah. look at his managerial career, I think we're the only one that actually sort of worked with him because he yeah. it didn't work at well at Ipswich, and then he was assistant at Villa and assistant with Ireland and Forest. I want to say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I, I uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it would be an, it would be an interesting one, but he's always going to be the long shot, definitely. Yeah. Um, the last one, um, again, mm. not on that site. Um, Danny Roll. Now, oh. Roll, Roll, he's Roll. roll. Yeah. <laughs> he's a bread. Look roll. at that record in the last six, man, for a team that was in the bottom uh, three. Look at that last game. <laughs> the best. Let's say the best thing. That last game. Just highlighted the difference in managers completely when you had Dodds on the sideline, hands in his pockets, listening to Michael Proctor about what he should do. And you had Danny Put, Roll on put the one side. of my strikers on, Dodds. Yeah. I've trained them all week. <laughs> They're just as good as me in my prime. Um, when you had Danny Roll literally playing the entire match on the sideline for Sheffield yeah, yeah. Wednesday, kicking every ball, moving every play. It was like he was playing Sabutio with the fact that he was it, moving them about so much. He was so animated, and it, yeah. I was watching him while we were doing the live stream. And I just kept saying, "Like, look at the way he's organising them at every section of this game. They know exactly mm. where they should be." And then you've got players like I know you hate him, Barry Bannon on the t- on the pitch, who's just another like voice of him within that team as well, just sort of getting the job, um, getting his message across. And yeah, I mean, I really think I'd I'd like that because he looks like a guy who's uh, there's no worse I think than when a manager comes in and just does Beal. or when something goes wrong it's just like just, yeah. for, for the listeners I'm scratching my chin and just looking aimlessly off like <laughs> it's not a lazy eye um, it's, it's a great great, great, great radio yeah <laughs> um, look at this everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! How do you even learn to do that? Um, yeah, um, he, the managers that just don't. Jack Ross was similar to that, where it, you'd never get animated or anything. Or, but like mm. Alex Neal, yes, he'd have his little conferences with his team, but you would see him out at the front trying to move players and tell them when they'd be. Mowbray as well was really good at doing that as well, and you were a bit like, Passion. yeah, Passion. it's just you can tell. If they're not happy, they try and sort it out rather than just going, well, I've told them all week. They'll surely get it right in the next 85 minutes or so. Right. Yeah. He, he's well, one for me that I think if I had three that I had to pick, it would be him, that's Danny Roll, Will Still and Steve Cooper would be my, my ideal. One of them I'd be happy with. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I like the look of him. And by the looks of it, I don't know if this is accurate, Sheffield Wednesday is his first full manager job. It is, yeah. Yeah, just been an assistant up until then. So, yeah. I mean, what an impression he's made. And like like you say, what an But then to- are we falling into the trap that he knew that team and knew what they wanted and was able to see what was going wrong and, and change that? So a bit like when... So when Roy Keane left and Sabrasia stepped in, Sabrasia had a great record for about five, six games because he basically just took apart what wasn't working from Roy Keane and the players got this ultimate freedom and we were great. And then when that freedom was too much, it all fell apart because it, there was no rules in place. There was no no one to try and control the inmates, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. could it be that, that he's actually looking more impressive because he knows that team so well? So if you bring him in, I mean, I, ultimately, it's the ideal time to bring in a manager now where you've got two months' worth of pre-season yeah. to, to do it because there's been very few times recently where we've actually brought a manager in in the closed season yeah it just doesn't happen um so i think the last one that we brought in properly was jack ross that was given like uh but if you remember when he got brought in they said oh we only have like nine senior players at the time it was like so he got a squad sort of basically handed to him of like yeah they'll play they'll do this they'll do that you've got parkinson got a summer but that's only because of covid yeah yeah. Um, did John, Johnson got a summer, I suppose, but like someone who was literally brought in to be like, you brought in in June, this is it now, it's yours, go, yeah. go at, make it happen. Was well, you like crazy. you like to think that the, 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 the higher-ups have thought like that, the fact that yeah. they've not tried to appoint somebody 
and kept Dodds. Yeah, it was like um, I didn't want them to sack Mowbray last season um, in the summer. But if you were going to do it, that was the time to do it. Yeah, not, but you, you should, I, I'll never agree that you should have done no. that. You should have never no, done that without a replacement. Done. But if you were going to sack a manager, it was time to break the cycle of doing it in the middle of a season. Yeah. That's just yeah. Me. Well, what do you think the chances are? Would he come to Sunderland? Danny Roll? Uh, yeah. Is that a better no, prospect? It wasn't, no, it was something to do with, I think Copley put it out saying, it's like, isn't his release clause from Sheffield Wednesday five mil? We ain't paying that. Why? Because we're cheap. Why? Because we're Why? very cheap. That's twenty five percent of Jack Clark's sale price. <laughs> yeah, but we've got to, you know, like buy another wonder kid from Spurs mm. or someone. If if the money wasn't the objective as a as a manager, do you think it'd be the right career move? Or well, would it be better for him to stay? I think it'd be better for him to stay with Chef Wed and see if he yeah. can progress is is what I would say. Like Beale's the ultimate one weirdly in the position of he was doing well with QPR. He rejected Wolves, if you remember, and mm. was like, oh, actually, okay, good. He's done the right thing. He's staying with the club. And then two weeks later, Rangers came in and he was like, right, I'm off, lads, bye. And it was like, you, you've blown that. like, yeah. that's it. And then you obviously it didn't go well. But how many times do Rangers come knocking for you? Yeah. You know, it's just... Um, yeah, if I was if I was Danny Roll, I'd probably stay at Chef Wed because they're a big club. It's not like it's he's at Rotherham or, or yeah, no offense, or he's at like you know a, a, <laughs> offense, a, yeah. much offense. <laughs> yeah, it's not like he's at an absolutely like sort of minuscule, pointless team. Sheffield yeah. Wednesday are a big side, and and they're on hard times like we are. But um, yeah, yeah. So I think he's he's in a good place for him. Plus the other two don't command a fee. To get him out, they've the the free agents. Yeah, yeah. So, so you said other. You, so you said other two. So who's your first two? Who's your who's your S still in, in order? Cooper. Still in Cooper's your your yeah. first two. That's your. They're completely chalk and cheese to each other. Yeah. Cooper works with the model and with and and still is the the unknown sort of uh, entity that I kind of want to go for just to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can always me, sack him in November if it's going wrong. <laughs> yeah, for me it would be. <laughs> you're not gonna like it. Oh, it'd God, be it's still be David Moyes. You know, it'd be still <laughs> then Poye, then Roll. No, well, that's that's the same as me. You've got two in the same place as me, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But I've, I've replaced Cooper with Poye. <laughs> I mean, that's. I think you need your head check in there. So <laughs> So it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you've been think. proven to get out of this division, yeah. and the other one hasn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter what either of us think. It yeah. matters what the people that follow us think yeah. in the comments. So yeah. let us know. And they clearly think from last time we're thick. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Basically, let us know. <laughs> we just got ultimately <laughs> criticised for who we'd keep and who we'd sell. It was quite funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let's let's get it going again, managers. Yeah. Let, let us know who you going. Keep oh nine. Are you on crack? And I was like, I just want one comedy moment a season. It's all I want. Let so the comments should read, your worst Sunderland manager, your best Sunderland manager. And your choice. Your, your favourite choice for Sunderland manager, and but who you think will get as manager. So that could be two different people, or it cool. could be the same. So. And for those who comment when we literally say a question and then comment half an hour later when they finish watching the episode, just, just wait to the end and do it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> like, Write it down, little yeah. notepad. <laughs> I'll come back to this, point one. <laughs> It's like when somebody sends you a voice note and it's like seven minutes long and they asked you a question in the first 30 seconds. Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> I've got to go and listen to that again now. Yeah. Right. Gonna, that's an extended extra time. We normally aim for half an hour on 58 minutes. I know, but they're missing Thursdays at the moment, so we're that's filling true. in for the for the content. For the content. So but would you like to say goodbye to all our critics who are gonna be in the comments <laughs> as they're fun. typing aggressively? <laughs> yes, they're hammer fisting the keyboards to be like, you don't know football. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, uh, I look forward to reading them all. They they make me and Mike laugh quite a lot when we're just like, Yeah, we are idiots. It's great. <laughs> but how how have we been able to do this? Like just talk absolute nonsense and, and have anyone listen to it. It's, don't tell Philly. We want to keep our jobs. <laughs> Philly will love it. Philly will just be like <laughs> Philly will love it. But uh 
Yeah, I would say uh, thank you all for, for listening. Go easy on the keyboards um, for for the comments, but I'll enjoy reading them. And uh, tell Mike that he's wrong, that Wilkinson is worse than Moyes. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I've not forgotten. Okay, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, much appreciated. If you're new and you made it through an hour of us rambling, you're going to love this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Um, and if you're not new, don't forget hit like, give us a comment and all that jazz. And consider becoming a channel member, um, of which you'll see scrolling up in the credits right about now. Bye. <laughs>